coming up on The Joy of Editing. Today, I want to show you some advanced editing techniques using the Nick Collection 7. I'll be working with Nick Color Effects today. I want to show you luminosity and polygon selections. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I'm pulling out the Nick Collection 7. I want to show you some advanced editing techniques with some new tools inside of the Nick Collection 7. I'll be working with uh, color effects today. We'll be looking at luminosity masks as well as polygon selections, and I'll show you how we can combine those together to get better results. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Now I'm using the Nick Collection 7 palette. If you don't see yours, you can come up to File in Photoshop, come down to Automate, and you will find it right in here. Just click on Nick Collection 7 palette and you'll launch it. And I just, and you can move it around and put it anywhere you want it. I put mine right here. And if you click this button right here, you can minimize it and it'll live down here. And then if you want to open it back up, just click this button and you open it back up. I'll be using Nick Color Effects, so I'll click this button. We'll launch Nick Color Effects and we will get started. And here we are inside of Nick Color Effects. Now, right now, we're seeing the side-by-side -side view. I'm going to click this button right here and go back to the normal view. And by the way, if you want to fit this to the screen, just click this button right here here if you want to fill that entire space you'll click this button and it just fills it in but it over expands it too much so i like to use this button so we'll click the fit zoom button by the way i almost forgot to tell you i have a special promo code for you for the joy of editing and you'll find that in the description below this video it'll save you 15 percent off the nick collection 7 from now until the end of the month may 31st in the description below this video, you'll find a link that'll take you over where you could purchase the Nick Collection 7. And you also find that promo code there. Copy that promo code. And then when you get to checkout, paste in that code, apply it, and you'll get 15% off. But remember, that promo code ends at the end of the month, May 31st. If you're interested in the Nick Collection, now's a good time to get it and save an additional 15% off. Now let's get started. I took this image up at Lake Erie, Pennsylvania, and I like these trees that were falling over. I thought this makes a, you know, interesting little image. It might also look nice in black and white, but I want to show you some things that we can do with this, with the new Nick Collection 7, things that we couldn't have done before. And I think you'll enjoy this. It's a more advanced technique as I said at the beginning of the tutorial. I'll start out by using some new filters inside of color effects, and they are the Vivesa filters. Now, I made myself a little category called Vivesa. I'm going to click this, and this is a category that I made myself. This is a new feature of the Nick Collection 7. We can make our own categories. I'm not going to get into that today. I mentioned that in my first look video, as well as you could search for filters right here. If you want to find the Vivesa filters, just click the search bar and type in Vivesa, and the Vivesa filters will come up here. What I did at this point, I did the same thing and then just put those into my own little category. But there you go. There are all the Vivesa filters for you. So just type in Vivesa in the search bar. And this is a new feature also in the Nick collection. Pretty cool stuff. Now that I have these Vivesa filters, I'm going to click on the first one, Global Adjustments. I'll click the plus. Now the cool thing is, is inside of Color Effects, these Vivesa filters live. And you can add as many of these Global Adjustments as you want. And then you could target just certain areas of your image by adding multiple Global Adjustment filters. Pretty nice. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Now, the first thing I want to do, I'm looking at these grassy areas, and what I'd like to do is lighten them up, add a little bit more saturation, and maybe a little bit of contrast to them. So I will use the Luminosity Mask. Now, this is new inside of the Nick Collection 7. So I'm going to click this button right here. And now you see that little crosshatch. What I need to do is find some of these grassy areas that represent the tone I want. Like maybe right here, I'm going to click right here. And now if you'll notice over here where it says mask options, this is the area that I've selected. Now all these little, let's call these handles, all these handles we can adjust. Like for instance, if we want to feather this more into light areas, we can click and drag this to the right or click this handle and drag it to the left to encompass more dark areas, or we can broaden the area we've selected by adjusting this 
handle more to the right to encompass more light tones, and this handle to the left to encompass more dark tones. But we can also click this button right here and see what that mask looks like. And I think it's pretty good. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it just the way it is. Now, all the light areas are selecting that targeted area that I've chosen at the beginning. Anything in black will be not selected. So we'll click this button again and we'll see the image back. And now let's make some adjustments. But before I do that, the luminosity masks enable you to grab the entire image rather than using a control point and just getting a certain area of the image. But we can also combine this with a polygon selection tool to take things out of the selection, which I'll show you in a little bit. By the way, if you want to convert this image into a smart object, just click this button right here. A little check goes there. Now this becomes a smart object. Once I send this back to Photoshop, I can come back in and make readjustments, which is really nice. I'll start out with the brightness adjustment. I just want to lighten this up a little bit. See, if I go too far, it's going to look really weird, right? I just want a little bit of brightness here. Maybe something like that, 11%. And now let's add some contrast to that. Well, that's way too much, Dave. So let's back that off. Maybe just a little bit of contrast. You got to be careful here. You don't overdo. And how about a little bit of saturation? Let's give that a little bit of saturation. I think that'll look nice. Maybe something like that. Now we can click right here and uncheck this. Here's before and here's after. But let's say I only want to really affect the grasses. I don't care if it gets some of the greenery down in here, but I don't want it maybe up in these trees. Here's where I can use a polygon selection tool to subtract that out. Now, the polygon selection tool, this button right here is new to the Nick Collection 7. So I'm going to click it. But before I do, notice that little note above it here. It says, add control polygon, hold option to add neutral. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to hold my option to add a neutral point. And I'm going to click like right here outside of the image. And I'm going to keep coming across here like this. I don't want the top areas of the trees and so on in this selection. Notice that I'm outside the image. I'll click. I'll drag across. I'll click here again, right here. And then I'll click here on the orange dot to close this off. Now, this is a neutral. And you'll notice the opacity is the whole way down. However, if I do click on this mask button, you can see a lot of things are selected in here, which will affect what this looks like. But let me show you something. I'm going to click this button so we can go back to the image view. And now if you click this button right next to global adjustment, if I click this, you can see the overall mask. But you'll notice some of that area has not been taken out of there. But we can fix that. You see the luminance and chrominance sliders here. If I take this and drag it the whole way off to the left and take the chrominance and drag it the whole way to the left, I've subtracted that out. So I just wanted to point that out. You may want to check that out whenever you use the polygon to like subtract something out. A lot of times it doesn't get the whole thing. And now if I click this button again, we go back to the image view. And now if I click this button, we can see there's the before and I'll click it again. And here's the after. And I have that nice feathering up in there. So it blends in really naturally. And if I need more feathering, I could come back here and just drag the feathering slider to the right, and that'll give us some more feathering or take feathering away by dragging it to the left. Let's add another global adjustment. By the way, you can collapse these filters by clicking right here. You can collapse it. Now we'll come over here and click global adjustments plus, and now we add another global adjustment. And now what I want to do is get some of the darker tones and really darken them up a little bit. So what we'll do is use another luminosity mask. I'll click this button again and target like right here. And if we click on the mask icon for the luminosity mask, we can see the areas in light that we are targeting. So I'll click this again. And now what we can do is I'm going to take the shadow slider and just start to drag it to the left. You see that? Just to darken up some of those shadow tones in there. And now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But see how I brought some nice shadows out, building up some nice contrast in the image. Next up, let's look at the sky. What I'd like to do is see some of the darker shadowy tones in the sky. I'd like to darken those up a little bit more and maybe add a little bit of saturation to them. I'll click right here and collapse this global adjustment. Nothing changes there. Now let's add another global adjustment by clicking 
this button in our filters, the plus for global adjustments, and there we have it. And now I'm looking at the sky up here, and I'd like to darken some of the shadowy tones up in here. So here's what I'll do. I'll click on the luminosity mask button again, and let's find a tone like right here. I'll click one time, and now we can click on the mask to see the area we've selected. Now we've selected a lot of stuff down in here too. But what we can do is, let me go ahead and uh, see if I can adjust this a little bit. I'm going to take this feathering in a little bit like this on the bottom. And maybe this adjustment for the light feathering, I'll bring this in to the left on the top. And maybe I'll pull this light value in on the top a little bit. So I'm only targeting certain tones in there. Maybe something like that should be pretty good. And maybe I'll take this shadow feathering and just drag it out just a little bit more. Maybe somewhere right around there. And now let's go ahead and click this button to see the image again. And now let's make an adjustment. I'm going to take the brightness slider and just pull this to the left just to darken those tones up a little bit, just like that. And now let's take the saturation adjustment and just drag this to the right and bring out just a little bit of saturation. There's a little bit of blue up in there. So something like that. Now here is the before and here is the after. Now, if you look at this tree right here, if I shut off this global adjustment, you can see it is affecting that tree, and I don't want that. So we can use the polygon selection tool again. So I'll click this button, and now I'll hold my alter option key down, and I'm going to click right here. I'm going to come across here like this, like this, over here, up here. I don't want to affect this tree here. Just in case it's getting affected, I'm going to click out here. Now you'll notice I click and then I drag and then I click, drag, click, and that drops a point. You see that? I'll click here, I'll drag here, I'll click, drag, and come here. And this time I'm outside of the image, right? So I'm going to come down, and this helps because I'm outside of the image. And when I come over here, I can make sure I'm getting everything inside of there. And then I'll come up and click on the orange dot and close that off. Now let's click on this mask icon. And you can see a lot of that stuff inside of there is selected. So I'm going to take the chrominance and drag this to the left like that. And then I'll drag the luminance and drag it to the left. And you can see that is all dropped out, right? And now I'll click the mask icon again to see the image again. And now when I shut this off, here's the before and here's the after. Again, the before and the after, and it's not affecting anything down in here. So that's pretty cool. Now, let me click on this mask button for the global adjustment, the overall global adjustment. And there you can see the mask. It's only targeting that area up in here. So pretty cool. So let me click this again, and we're back to the image. I'm almost done. I'm going to click right here to collapse this. Two more little adjustments, and we're done. I'm going to come back over to Filters, and this time I'm going to click the plus for Selective Tones, and this will be a global adjustment. All I want to do here is adjust my highlights. I just want to open up the highlights a little bit to maybe somewhere right around there. I just want to lighten up my midtones slightly to maybe right about there. And now I'm going to Blacks, and I'll just take the black slider to the left a little bit just to add a little bit of extra contrast. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. So that's a nice adjustment. I'll click right here in Selective Tones just to collapse this filter. You don't have to do that, but I just like to do that. That way I have a lot of real estate for my new filter. And now I'm going to come up here, click the X. In the search bar, I'm going to type HSL for the HSL filter. HSL has been moved over to filters, so you can add as many of these as you want. I'm just going to add one. I'm going to click the plus, and here is my HSL filter. And I'll use the vibrancy off this filter. So I'm going to drag this to the right just to add a little bit more vibrancy to the color. I think it'll look a little nicer just like that. And now if my blues and my sky are getting too much saturation, I can click on this blue button and maybe just pull back on that saturation of blue just a little wee tiny bit like right there. If we click this button right here, we can see here's the before now, just so you know, I'm holding the left click of the mouse down, and we see the before. Now, as soon as I release the left click, now you see the after. And that's all I want to do right now in color effects. Now, remember, I checked on convert to smart object. That means if I have to come back in and retweak anything, I can from Photoshop. So that's really nice. I just click apply, 
and that'll save this back out to Photoshop. And now here we are in Photoshop. Now, if we don't want to see the Nick Collection 7 palette again, click this minus button. It hides down over here. And then again, you just click this button again to see it back up. But this will just hide it away. Now, notice my layer is labeled Nick 7 color effects. Here is the smart filter right here. If I double click this, it'll send me right back into color effects with all of my adjustments. And then I can retweak if I want to. So let me shut off this nick color effects layer here's before and here's after and i like my final result now don't forget you can save 15 percent off the nick collection if you click on my affiliate link in the description below and use my promo code that i gave you in that description as well and you'll save 15 percent off from now until the end of may that'll be may 31st when you use my affiliate link i make a small commission and this helps support my channel and when you use that link, I really appreciate it. Well, there it is, everyone. Today, I was using a lot of the new features inside of the Nick Collection 7. Today, it was advanced editing techniques. I use luminosity and polygon selections, as well as the Vivesa filters, and even the HSL filter, which got moved from global filters over to filters. Now you can add as many of those as you want. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.